In part one, David Richardson, head of physics at Gordano School and a demonstrator for the Institute of Physics, showed some exciting forces experiments to a group of science teachers at St James's Catholic High School. In this section, he concentrates on electrostatics and the Van de Graaff generator and finishes off the day with other personal favourites. Using a balloon to demonstrate how rubbing it causes static electricity to be built up. And if you rub it against your clothing or against the cloth, you can demonstrate that by using it to be attracted towards other objects. The natural progression from using a cloth to charge an object is to use a Van de Graaff generator, where this belt carries charge to the dome on the top, continuously moving, building the charge up to a very high level. Now, a lot of people are quite scared of using the Van de Graaff generator, but there, is, there really is nothing to fear from this. Wendy, would you like to come and volunteer? Now, the first experiment to do is to demonstrate the simple sparking that happens. If you hold this, that's going to provide the place for it to go down to Earth. So the sphere is going to become charged. All of the electrons on here are going to want to push and jump off, and they're going to do that by jumping as a spark to the, to the sphere that you're holding. You're looking a little nervous at the moment. I'm very nervous. Why, why are you nervous? I had a really bad experience when I was at college, uh, when I was learning to be a teacher. I got a really bad electric shock. OK, I'm going to promise you that you won't get an electric shock from this. And the way to do that is to touch the dome onto the large dome of the Van de Graaff. And then we can switch it on. As you then gently move the dome away, the sparks will start to be formed. The further away, the bigger the sparks. Then when you've described that to the pupils, move the dome back towards so they touch. We can then switch off the Van de Graaff generator Nobody gets an electric shock. Would you like to try turning it on? And then turn it off. No electric shock? No. Brilliant. I think as a non-physicist, my biggest fear might be that if I got something in the wrong order or did something wrong, that I could damage a child, I could hurt them. Is that possible? The, the, the important thing is that you can't die from the sparks that you get from this. It can give you a, a, a tweak or, a, or a, a shock, but there's no lasting damage from that. So even if you get it in the wrong order, the worst that can happen is that somebody will squeal at you, or you miss, you've just given me a spark. Having had lots and lots of practice, um, prior to the lesson of using the Van de Graaff, um, it was quite useful not to rush in and, and get nervous and worried if it didn't work. A couple of weeks later, Wendy Butler, head of biology, prepares to teach electrostatics to her Year 11 GCSE science group. And he invented this piece of machinery that you've got here. As the belt moves, and the one thing that is awful is if you're worried about something and you pass your fears on to students that you're teaching because that's the complete opposite to what you want to do you want to make it fun and enjoyable and this is going to carry any charge extra safely down towards the earth how we go we'll see if it works to start with she did it this morning it worked absolutely perfectly um, it worked for the first hour hour and a half of the day um, I came to use it uh, during the break time and wouldn't work at all. And there's one reason why it's not working, and that's probably because of moisture in the air, and moisture actually coats it. So what I'm going to do to try and overcome this is use a hairdryer, which will dry out the air around the belt. OK, whenever there's a, a build of charge, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, even sort of like having to obviously talk over a hairdryer. But it obviously is quite good in the fact that it actually shows that it, it does work and you can address humidity and moisture and things while that's working. It's, it's not uncommon for Van de Graaff's to be a little bit temperamental and difficult to get mm. going. If you've got a new, a brand new one, then they tend to work very well. Um, but over time, the belt starts to get a bit oxidised and, and the belt doesn't 
carry the charge mm. as well as you might hope. But heating it with the hairdryer is, is the right thing to do. Mm. Now, some of the things I noticed that it would start working and then you'd switch it off and put the hairdryer down. Yeah. If you can somehow make it so that you could keep heating with the hairdryer, you know it's working. Don't change what you're doing and right. maybe invite one of the pupils to come and blow the bubbles or come and invite the pupils to, um, to do the next bit of the experiment. It is possible now to charge people up and to show the effect that that has on people's hair. Now again, I do promise you, you won't get an electric shock. So you've stepped onto the plastic container and we're now going to charge you up but without you getting an electric shock. If you'd like to put your hand onto the dome, I can then switch it on and you will start to be charged up. And already we can see your hair starting to move and um, if you take your left hand and just ruffle your hair gently, we can use that to, to notice that your hair is sticking up as it's repelled from each other. Now to discharge you safely, I use a meter ruler and I bring that towards you. You take your hand off and then carefully step off the block. I can then discharge the van de Graaff and switch it off without an electric shock. The important thing to remember is that the sphere is earthed and will give you a fast, big discharge spark. And you use that to discharge the sphere or demonstrate the sparks. The wooden ruler can discharge it slowly and that's what you want to do when you're discharging one of the pupils from when they've been charged with their hands on the generator because it does it slowly because it's an insulator. Now if I put this in here and I turn it on, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to rise up. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, I was quite pleased that obviously the hair um, piece that goes into the Van de Graaff works. Well, you can see, is it repelling it? Wendy tried out other experiments using the Van de Graaff generator, which David didn't demonstrate. It's moving. There you go. The polystyrene packing obviously has to be, I think, the, the main one that I was, you know, really pleased with. I had tried that before just to see whether or not it would work and it would have the desirable effect. And I've made my two characters this afternoon, Charles and Camilla. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? They'll pop out the cup. Right, good, they'll pop out. Let's have a look. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> that was fun. Is there anything you shouldn't do with the children in the generator? Now the important thing of what not to do is to get a string of children all attached to the Van de Graaff generator with it switched on. Because there's so much surface area on so many children, there's a lot of space to store a lot of charge, which means that when they discharge their spark, you can discharge all of them at the same time and the last person experiences a very big shock. If you're going to allow people to experience shocks from the Van de Graaff generator, one person attached, giving the shock in a controlled way with you supervising it. I'm not worried at all about teachers doing the Van de Graaff experiments, as long as they're confident, as long as they've practiced them. Because pupils get excited by the Van de Graaff, it's a good experiment to do. But the teacher, by practicing it beforehand, becoming confident, can do it in a way that is completely safe. When something goes wrong in your lesson, it's, it's very easy to be completely thrown. And you have to think very quickly on your feet. You don't want to abandon things. Um, and I think when you first start out teaching, one of the things that you, that's very easy to do is that you do something, it doesn't work, and then you abandon the whole experiment and say, right, move on, you've seen it, and off you go. Whereas practicing this has actually helped think, right, it didn't work as well as I wanted it to work. But if I have a go of this, if I explain this, if we work through it and why it didn't work, then that will just be as, just as equally as useful to the students as it is to just put the machine away and say, right, that doesn't work. We'll have a look at it in a book. People don't remember the book. David finished off his demonstrations That's with some personal favourites on a range of topics, too. including this one involving microwaves. The particular experiment with the light bulb brought a lot of discussion in the department as to really understand the physics behind it. Now, traditionally, people have been told never put metal in a microwave. But you can do it safely by taking a light bulb 
in a beaker about half full of water. The important thing for this experiment is not to leave it in too long. Turn it on, but then to turn it off as soon as you see the light bulb glow. So if you look in the front, the bulb will start to, to glow, and as soon as you see it glow, turn the microwave off. I'm just wondering if children are going to go home and um, put light bulbs in their microwave. Is there a serious risk, really, if they do? The risk is that the light bulb will shatter and they will have glass inside their microwave. I think um, you need to judge that for your own pupils. Um, if your pupils you know will take heed of your warning and not do that, then show them. This is the air gun to demonstrate air pressure. To demonstrate absolutely beautifully that air is made up of particles. Oh, cool. <laughs> Excellent. I really like the air gun, um, and I've used that in my lessons. This is the flying tea bag experiment to illustrate that hot air rises. The tag tea bags. You can empty out the tea from inside, and you'll be left with a cylinder of tissue paper. And that cylinder, cylinder of paper, will stand up on end. And it is as simple as lighting the top and watching. And you can link that very nicely into the idea that hot gases rise up, and as it cools, it falls back down. The flying tea bag really does show the idea of convection and how when you've got something hot, it rises up. The disappearing ball on the rice is one of my favourite experiments because it really is simple, the rice but it's showing I so many things. Rice. And what happens is the metal ball has sunk down into the rice and the polystyrene ball has risen to the top. The metal ball has sunk because it's more dense than the rice. The polystyrene ball has risen to the surface. Floating and sinking is a really difficult concept for year sevens to get their head round. But when they see the ball disappearing slowly into the rice, when they see the polystyrene ball rising out, it demonstrates in a very simple and visual way how floating and sinking works. And finally, here's a gravity experiment. Which of these you think hits the table first? I've always struggled to teach and communicate the idea that things fall at the same speed. I'll then pass these to the pupils. And this one's a lot heavier. The reason that one's a lot heavier is that's been injected with water with a hypodermic needle and this one's full of air. And when I saw the idea of using a heavy ball and a light ball that look identical, pupils get it. Watching the balls fall and seeing them hit the table at the same time, they're completely convinced by that and using that to communicate different masses falling at the same speed really works. As in all experiments, CLEAPS is very valuable as a resource to discover the safety issues you have to take into effect. If you consult the CLEAPS information before you do an experiment, you will be aware of all the possible dangers. David has generated so much enthusiasm. He has such a theatrical approach. To, um, to teaching, I'm sure he must, well having an audience of teachers that kept us captivated, I'm sure he must do that with his students. And I think a lot of his enthusiasm spills over and you feel that you want to go and try something yourself. So yes, I'm very pleased that we had him in and it has made a difference to our department so far. Mm -hmm.